Hi guys, Tish here and welcome back to my channel, Auto Social UK. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing Renault's latest addition to their lineup. It's a strong hybrid C-segment SUV, the Renault Austral. It's set to replace the Kajar, but it has some tough competition. It's in a segment with cars like the Hyundai Tucson, the Kia Sportage, and the car that I've recently driven, which is the Nissan X-Trail E-Force. So is it good enough to take on those rivals? Well, hopefully that's what I'm gonna find out in today's video. So if that sounds good, please keep watching. And if you do like new car reviews and car content, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Plus guys, I just want you to check. Apparently YouTube have been naughty and they've been going around and they've been unsubscribing people. So if that's you, then make sure you resubscribe to the channel. So let's take a look at the styling of the Renault Austral because it's actually pretty striking, right? It looks very familiar to their similar car that they've just released, which is of course the Megane E-Tense. But that car is fully electric. This, however, is a strong hybrid. And I really like the fact that they've not just taken their electric cars and given them a fresh new look. They've moved it across the whole of the range. Also guys, if at any point you want any more information about the Renault Austral, then definitely get in contact with John Banks. I'll pop their details down below. This car has literally just arrived at their dealerships and I've nabbed it off of them. You get the new Renault badge on the front of the Austral, which is really quite large. And to start with, I wasn't too sure how I felt about it. But now, seeing it on their cars, I think it looks really good, especially in this top spec model. So this is the Esprit Alpine. I know, it's a bit of sacrilege, right? They've taken the Alpine name and they've put it on a strong hybrid. Don't really know how I feel about that. However, taking aside the fact that I'm a little bit sad that they've diluted the brand of Alpine, when it comes to the styling tweaks that they've made to this Esprit Alpine model, they're really good actually. I love the contrasting details of the white, but you've got the gloss black and you've got these fabulous wheels as well. They're kind of in a dark gray with a contrasting black and you also get the Alpine logo on them as well. Very, very cool. I love the headlights. I like the way that Renault haven't moved too far from their existing models. They still have that C signature light design, which makes it really, really distinctive, but they've given it a fresh new feel. On the top spec model, these are also Renault LED matrix vision headlights. So some pretty fancy lighting technology. And if you look really, really closely, I love the way you have this kind of honeycomb design inside the lights it's very very pretty in fact i like the way that renault have been using their lights as almost pieces of art at the moment but let's take a look inside because that's where i think the renault austral is pretty special because if you thought the renault austral was pretty striking from the front it's also really striking on the interior as well I love the interior of this cabin. In fact, I fell in love with the interior of the Renault Megane. And if you wanna see my review, I actually put it on the John Banks channel. I'll pop it up there somewhere. And it gets a very, very similar layout. You've got the digital center console, which is in a portrait design. And then you've got the kind of sweeping through digital drivers display as well. And in fact, on this car, you've even got a pretty big head up display as well. So loads and loads of tech going on. But first of all, let's just talk about design, layout and quality. Well, it's absolutely fabulous in here. Everything feels such high quality. If you go searching for scratchy plastics, you will find them, but they're all in places that aren't really in constant contact with your skin. I love this center console, this is brilliant. And this fighter jet kind of console looks a bit funny, doesn't it? Almost looks like it could be a handbrake, but it's not. It's simply for sliding this section forward and back. So once it's slid forwards, you then have almost like a secret compartment for popping things inside. And then you slide it back and that reveals your cup holders. You've also got some wireless charging, which is just placed on here. You've then got 
two USB-C and a 12 volt charging port. And if you needed even more storage, you've also got a center console which splits in two and you can access that. Now the Esprit trim, what does that get you? Well, it gets you some very nice blue stitching on Alcantara throughout the cabin. So you've got a bit on the center console here. You've also got it down the sides of the seats. You also get little Alpine logos which are stitched into the headrests and these little French flags as well. Those are really sweet. You also get these very sporty seat belts as well. But one of my favourite things that you get with the Alpine Esprit trim is this steering wheel. So it's always in this shape and design which I quite like. It's a rounded off hexagon but when you go for the top spec Esprit trim, you get red, white and blue stitching along the top of the leather wrapped wheel. And then at the bottom, you get Alcantara. Now this is the perfect mix for me because it means that you get leather to the touch, but you also get that sporty Alcantara. However, there are things I don't like about this steering wheel. And that's the fact that this chrome detailing seems to get quite marked with your fingerprints. This car's brand new and it's already a little bit grubby. There's also a lot going on. So you've got the standard controls for your lights and also for your window wipers, but you've also got those paddles for your regenerative braking. You've got the gear selector, which is now behind the steering wheel. And in classic Renault form, you've also got your volume controls at the back as well. So there's a lot going on. And I'm about to make this a crap sandwich because that was the little crap bit that I don't really like. But here's another thing that I do like, and that's the buttons on the steering wheel. These buttons look all glossy and pretty, and they look like they'd be haptic, but they're actually not. These are physical buttons, and when you press them, they respond really well, and you're not going to hit them accidentally like you would do on the Volkswagen Group cars. In the UK, they've kept the lineup of Renault Austral pretty simple. Outside of the UK, you get some other engine options. However, we simply get the strong hybrid, which is definitely the best option to choose. That comes with a 1.2 litre petrol turbocharged engine, which doesn't sound a lot for this size of car. But remember, it's a strong hybrid. So that means that it's coupled together with a 1.7 kilowatt hour battery. That still sounds pretty small, but that hasn't stopped the Renault Austral from having some impressive figures. It gets 197 brake horsepower, which I actually think is the sweet spot in a car this size. Any bigger, and that's gonna affect your mile per gallon, and any less, and it's going to feel underpowered, especially when you've got a full car. But actually, at all times, this feels pretty nippy. Of course, as you pop your foot down, you get some instant acceleration and that's coming from the battery. That's definitely helped by that instant electric power. It feels very, very comfortable on the roads. It is on some quite big tires and you do hear that when you get up to kind of quicker speeds and you do feel a few bumps on the road. But actually, I think if you was to go to some of the lower spec models, you wouldn't find that at all. It'd be quite comfortable. I really like the layout as well. It feels very driver focused. It actually feels quite special. Renaults of old have felt a bit cheap and not particularly nice, but this definitely doesn't fall into that category. Okay, starting in upwards of 35,000 pounds, you would hope that it doesn't feel cheap. But that's not to say that other cars on the market around that price bracket are definitely feeling cheaper than the Austral. I would like the steering to be just a little bit stiffer so it gave you a little bit more driving engagement. But actually, for people that are going to be driving this car as family cars, I can't see that being an issue at all. And if you want a sporty car, then you're probably not going to pick something like the Renault Austral. Of course, space is very important in a family car and luckily the Renault Austral gets lots of it. Because of its high roof line, it means I've got loads of headroom, even with this lovely panoramic sunroof. I've also got plenty of legroom as well. You do have a pull-out armrest, which has got a couple of cup holders and you've got USB-C ports. 
However, it is missing things back here like perhaps rear climate control dials or some through loading. But it might not have through loading, it does have a rear sliding bench and that means you can slide this bench forward and backwards to increase the boot space. I don't think the rear design of the Austral is quite as good looking as the front. However, I do quite like the way that these lights wrap its hips and they almost join in the middle. Once again, you've got that new Renault badge. Of course, at the bottom, you're not seeing any tailpipes. They're definitely moving towards a sustainable future and moving away from showing that they've got those performance orientated elements because that's not really what the Austral is about. All versions get an electric boot and inside the boot you'll find just under 500 litres. Now that isn't the best in its class, there are some rivals which get more. Can't remember which but I'll pop them on the screen, but actually it's pretty competitive. You also get a good amount of storage underneath the boot floor, but because this version gets a Harman Kardon sound system, you have to work your way around the subwoofer. But where the Austral really shines is in its fuel economy. It does in upwards of 60 miles per gallon and apparently at low speeds around town, it can drive for up to 80% of the time in pure electric, which is really impressive. But what was the actual fuel economy I achieved as I regularly forget to share that information? Well, it's not quite the 60 mpg that Renault quote, but I achieved an average mpg of 50.9 over 22.4 miles. Not bad, considering a considerable amount of that was on the A14. So, the Renault Austral. It's pretty impressive, right? It's a very well-rounded family car, which ticks a lot of the boxes. The fuel economy is great. It drives well, it's comfortable, it has a ton of space, loads of specification and some clever technology. Renault have clearly worked really hard on that quality and engine refinement. And now I think it comes down to personal taste as to which family car you choose. But let me know, do you think that Renault have done enough to take on the likes of the Kia Sportage or the Hyundai Tucson? Perhaps you're still planning on buying one of the competitors. Let me know which one you're planning to buy down below. If you have enjoyed this video, guys, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Want to see more? Well, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you did have any further questions or queries about the Renault Austral, or if you wanted to book a test drive at either Cambridge or Ipswich, then you can do that with John Banks. I'll pop all their details in the description box. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye.